Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about school music rooms. And a project came across my desk the other day and I was looking at it and I thought, wow, this project has all the problems that school music rooms face. So let's use this as a case study and talk about it. And I think you're going to see if you have the same situation going on in your, your room at school, uh, this should be helpful to you. So look at the room layout in the photo. We got windows, okay. We got a tile floor, which most music rooms have because they're easy to maintain. And then in this situation, we had a 30 source band. So we have lots of energy. We have 30 sources. We have 30 instruments producing energy in the room. So basically 30 speakers, you know, full range in most cases. So that's how you have to think about sources. Remember, the room only sees energy. Doesn't matter if it's a a trumpet or a trombone or a singer. It's energy and that's all the room sees and the energy has frequency and amplitude. So with 30 speakers in the room and all these hard surfaces, we have high reverberation times and high reverberation times and the reflections off these hard surfaces create confusion, distortion. And in the notes on the room form that I see and, and talking to the band director, he said the kids are complaining they can't hear their instruments when they play. Well, what's the problem? The problem is high reverberation times. We know from our past videos that the reflections off these hard surfaces, the tile floors, the windows and all of that stuff creates high reverberation time. High reverberation time is distortion. They can't hear their instruments through the distortion. Now, let's think through the, his comments. They can't hear their instruments, even though the instruments are right next to them. So what does that tell you about the reverberation times in the room? They got to be horrible. They got to be horribly high. I think four, five, six seconds. You know, to, usually you get comments from people, well, I can't hear myself think. Okay, well, that's one thing. You know, that probably has many other factors that aren't related to acoustics and would be topics for another discussion in another category. But the bottom line here is you got high reverberation times and the people playing the instruments can't hear the instruments. So it's, it's a mess, okay? So we got lots of energy sources. We got to realize that each surface area that we treat only contributes 16 to 17% of the problem. Because we have six surface areas, right? Four walls, floor and ceiling. Divide 100 by six, you're gonna get around 17%. So each surface, area, now psychoacoustically, certain surfaces have a larger impact on intelligibility, definition. But let's save that for another discussion. Let's keep this just as basic so we can understand what we're up against here. So we treat one wall, 17, two walls, 34, 50. Here's the magic number. Remember, I always tell you when you're doing treatment, low frequency, middle frequency, high frequency treatment, you have to reach a point of critical mass. You have to treat so much before you have an audible impact. Then when you get an audible impact, then you can say, okay, it's too little or too much. But until you hear the impact of the treatment, you don't know where to go. You don't know to go more or less. So we have to reach what we call a critical mass. That's why I always say you got to have 60 to 70% coverage. Do you need more than that? Some people do, because it's subjective, you know. And once you start hearing the treatment, because you got to remember in an untreated room, you don't know which surface area is causing the biggest problem. They're all producing problems. As you start treating each surface, you eliminate that surface area that's treated, and then the others really get to talk or speak. So you really get to hear them, okay? In critical listening rooms, we go through this all the time. People that don't have budget to treat the whole room, I tell them, all right, let's just treat the front and the rear wall. Without hesitation, two or three months later, I'll get a call. Dennis, I love the treatment on the front and the rear, but now I'm hearing the side walls. That's what happens. When you treat the front and the rear, you can really hear the sides. He can, the clients never can hear. If I ask them, well, what surface areas cause the problem? They don't know because they can't hear it because they're all causing the problem. But through elimination of, by treating, you eliminate that surface area. If you eliminate the surface area, the other ones that are untreated really stick out, okay? So, and then look at the ceiling cavities in the photo. I don't know why the ceiling was designed like that. What a waste of money. 
okay? You have all these cavities that look like four feet by 18 inches deep. Well, they produce residences. If you run the numbers, let's see, four feet, 18 feet, you know, you, you're gonna, you got a cavity that's gonna be producing 90 cycles of energy resonating. So you got a whole ceiling that's producing all these residences. So that's no good. And then how are you gonna treat this cavity? You got a line, it's a small room, so you got to line everything in the cavity with treatment. So it's not cost effective. So what do we do? And obviously, schools don't have any money. Schools and churches, uh, you just don't, none of you have any money. And, and I, I don't know why that is, but I see it every day. So what have we done, you know, in that case? So we use a phase approach. We're going to treat two surfaces because we got to treat at least two surfaces so we get at least a third coverage, okay? It'll make a difference, but it won't give you a complete solution. So we're going to phase it in. And we have a program where we waive the design fee. We do the analysis on the room because you're a church or school. We don't do this for everyone, but for churches and schools, we make exception. So we waive the design fee, do the analysis, find out how much surface area you're going to need covered, put a cost to it, and then sell you the raw materials. Then, usually in a school, I have a shop. And the shop then can build the structures to hold the absorption technology, which is usually our foam. And that usually won't cost anything. In fact, a lot of schools that we've done work with, they use the treatment of the band room as a school project in the shop class to illustrate how to build wood frames and paint and finishing. There's all kinds of benefits that go with it. So you leave no money. We use a phasing approach and then we have our wave of the design fee and then we sell you the materials and we will even sell you the materials at a reduced cost. So Hope this helps. I hope you can get something that out of this case study that compares to your situation and get an understanding of what's involved. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.